Nick Durant here with Tattoo University and I'm going to do a video on how I made this foot pedal out of a tap light. This was a light that you would just push on it and it would turn on and you push on it and it would turn off. These are pretty cheap and I made this a while ago but if you want to stick around once the video is done I will explain some things about cheap foot pedals and maybe you might be better off making your own foot pedals or buying a more expensive foot pedal. Today I'm going to talk about making a foot pedal and what happened the other day is I had to switch out all my cords on my clip cord and I'm going to have to switch this one out on my foot pedal because it's a cheap cord and it corroded right where the, the wire was exposed so I'm going to have to switch these out. So while I was at it, I figured why don't I make a couple more foot pedals. I made a continuous on off switch with a foam plug and some wire and a on off switch that I took from some dog toenail trimmers actually. And then Here's my foot pedal that I've been using and it's one that you just push on it and it turns it on and stays on and then you, you come back push on it and it turns off. So I prefer this. Sometimes I don't want to be pushing on the pedal all the time like you do with these ones. You have to keep your foot on these to keep your machine running. I just kept this around as a backup foot pedal. I think it came with my power source. This one's already messing up. The reason why I don't like these, at least the cheap ones, is sometimes you gotta really mash down on them to get them to work. And when it's cheap like this and you mash down on it, it starts to bend. You can see it's already crooked on here. It doesn't make a good connection. This is just really cheap anyways. So sometimes when you're running machine if you mash down on this it'll run soft and then you mash down even harder to get it to run correctly. So I was digging around through my garage trying to find something that I could make a foot pedal out of and because I enjoy this kind of foot pedal or I use this kind of foot pedal I was looking for a switch I'm looking for something I could use but I didn't want to have to turn it on and off by hand with this little button I wanted something that I could just push on and maybe not put it on the floor because the problem is is this thing likes to scoot across the floor and it moves around or it gets kicked and uh, pulled out stuff like that so I'm looking for something that I can put on top of my work area and just push on it with my hand so digging around through my garage I ran into this and this was just hanging up what this is is it's a light and I had it in a dark area of my garage by my tools so I could see what I'm doing. And all you do is you push on it to get it to turn on. Push on it to get it to turn off. So it's pretty much the same thing as this pedal. And the shape and everything looks like it will work just fine for what I want to do. So I'm going to turn this into a foot pedal 
but one that I can use by hand. So when I get my ink, I can just reach over and turn my machine on and off. Okay, so the first thing you have to do is take the back off and take out these little screws. So I'm going to take this foot pedal apart and you can see it's got two screws but it also has this piece of plastic that it hinges on so you got to put something in between there kind of pop that off to get that off. So you can see these are very similar. All you have is this little button in here that when you step on it, it pushes it on. And then when you step on it, it turns it off. So with this, it's the same thing. When you push on it, it turns it on. Push on it, it turns it off. This is very small. And I don't know if this is going to work for what we're doing. So I'm going to make some adjustments to this maybe switch out this on off switch with this one first thing I'm going to do is remove all the hardware out here the light bulb this was what this was originally meant for but we don't need this anymore we just want the springs and the casing so that it'll work the same way but we're going to switch out our switch So what needs to happen is the edge of this is actually what makes contact with the on off switch. So I have to place my switch in here at the correct point so that when this pushes down it's going to hit it the rim of this is going to hit the on off switch. So in order to do that I'm going to have to cut some of this plastic and do a little epoxy. Maybe screw this piece into here. So my plan is to, since there's already an opening right here, just to enlarge this opening so that my switch will fit in there. And then adhere the switch to the bottom of this. Okay, so what I think I'm going to do is cut a notch out so the wire can go through this so I don't have this hanging out of the outside. I'm just going to put it on the inside so that it looks better and cut a little notch for my cord to go out the other side and I'm just going to use this existing screw hole and put a screw through this, maybe some glue, super glue to hold this in place.
So, here's the final product. Probably don't need such a long cord if it's just going to sit on top of your table. But, there it is. You can turn it on and off. Now that I have that switch in there. Wasn't my original plan, but we adapted and overcame. If this switch was a little heavy duty, wasn't such a little wimpy switch, I could have used this. But instead, we scrapped an old foot pedal and made a new one. And I'm going to do the same with these. Probably make some new foot pedals out of different materials. So. If you want to see that, just subscribe to my page and keep watching my videos. I like to make my own tattoo equipment when I can. I've made tattoo machines, I've made foot pedals. Some of these things can be a little gimmicky. You need to watch out for that. Um, I have made the foot pedals out of the rat traps and I have a video on that I'll post it but the problem with those is they don't work really good or they break really easy so I made this foot pedal a while back and this actually still works so it's a pretty good foot pedal and then I made this one recently and uh, one of these days I'll do a video on how I made this. This is two saw blades, a old foot pedal, and some bolts for a toilet seat. Along with some wire that I took out of my car. So, you've seen these kind of foot pedals, and they're really cheap, and I really hate these things. They don't last, they're garbage, and what happens is, you use them one time, and even for that one time, they give you a headache, they're a problem. So I switched to this, which is the same concept, but more expensive. And this worked just as good as this piece of garbage. Barely worked. I had to mash down on it to try to get it to work. I even used a little sandpaper in there to clean out the contacts. And I just overall hate this tattoo foot pedal. But I don't like to throw things away. With these cheap ones, go ahead and throw these away because they, you can't do anything with these. But with something that has good parts and it's just not built well, I'm going to strip it down and reuse the wire. And what I'm going to do is, for my next video, I will show you how to make a foot pedal out of these used saw blades. And then I will take this wire off of this crap foot pedal and use it to make a good foot pedal. So when it comes to foot pedals, you want to spend a little bit more money and get a good one because these cheap ones won't last you very long. Now, my tap light foot pedal actually lasted a really long time. But I'm going to fix it. I'm going to change the wire out. I've learned that I like a little thicker gauge wire. This was just speaker wire. I built this a long time ago. I've learned some things since I built that. I go with a thicker gauge wire this time. And another thing you got to be careful of, I'll try to put a picture of it in here, is that when you're making clip cords, you need to add this to your clip cord. Ox guard. It guards against oxidation. 
because what will happen is I was making these clip cords and they last about a year or so and then I could tell that the voltage had to be turned up and eventually it got to the point where they just didn't work well what I found out was that inside of here where the wire is not protected it corroded and it deteriorated and fell apart so you can make these out of speaker wire and use the old clips and just put new wire in there but you gotta remember to put that aux guard in there or else it's over time it's not gonna work So if you're making stuff like this, you want to make sure that it's not going to break on you during a tattoo. And any of the equipment you have needs to have the same standard. You don't want to have to stop in the middle of a tattoo to fix something. It just doesn't make you look professional. It makes you look like you don't know what you're doing. And it takes time and it gives you a headache. So if you have the money, spend the money to get good equipment. So I never thought I'd be doing videos like this. It just kind of started on its own and got its own momentum. What happened was when I was trying to learn how to tattoo, I was frequenting Facebook and some of these channels that, about tattooing and trying to teach you how to tattoo. And I saw a lot of bad information on there. So my goal with the videos was just to give you guys proof just to show you guys that some of this information was bad and you know what better way to show that than to make a video of it because you could sit there and argue with someone until you're blue in the face and they're not going to believe you until you actually show them a technique or show them why what they're saying is incorrect so I know there's people with more experience than me out there but they're not doing what I'm doing. There's missing information that you guys don't have and that leads to bad information being put out there. So the reason why it's called Tattoo University isn't that I think I'm the best teacher in the world or I'm the one who knows everything I don't. But just like at a university, they test things out, they do experiments. I'm doing the same thing when it comes to tattooing. I'm just doing this because I enjoy tattooing and I see there's a lot of misinformation out there and I wanted to kind of help correct that a lot of tattoo artists would listen to Joe Blow their buddy and take it that that was scripture that that was how tattooing was they would never question anything they would never look into it themselves if so-and-so said this was the way to do it then that was the way they were going to do it so the idea here is just to show you guys another way and not to tell you that this is the way it has to be done but just to make you think a little bit maybe think there might be a better way of doing something out there or maybe I shouldn't believe so and so who is putting all this bad information out because they're telling me to do something and it's not working so it's not up to me to teach you guys how to do stuff it's up to you guys to watch these videos and make informed decisions on your own on how to do things. So don't forget to check us out on Facebook, Tattoo University, and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to get updates on some of the new videos. Uh, we'll be redoing a lot of those real soon here, so keep your eyes open for those. And also check out the website. Still working on it. I'm a busy person, but eventually it'll be done. My goal with the website is that instead of you guys searching for information and always trying to find information, that you'll be able to go to one place and then 
find information from there. It's not, I'm not going to do everything myself. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do videos that I haven't seen on the internet. A lot of these videos that I'm doing, I do because I don't see anything like it on the internet. Or I see something on there, but I've noticed that the information is incorrect. And so a lot of this stuff you're going to see is brand new. You're not going to see it on another channel. This is stuff that I'm doing on my own, experiments that I'm doing on my own. And experiments don't always work. Uh, one of these days I'm going to post some videos about some of the stuff that has not worked and has gone wrong. You guys can learn from my mistakes. I'm not afraid to make mistakes or admit that I make mistakes. So I think you guys will probably enjoy some blooper reel once I get it up. Uh, some of the things I've done. So, you know, this channel is going to show you stuff that you have never seen before because I'm doing it on my own or I can't find it so I'm posting it myself and then you guys need to make a decision on it of whether it's good information or not I don't really care if you like me or don't like me or if what you think about me and I care about tattooing and making sure people have good information I think it's worse to hide information from people than it is to give them information I think right now there's kind of a bad attitude out there where tattoo artists are trying to hide information from other tattoo artists and they think it's going to help them get ahead in some way and I don't understand that you know they think they're hiding information they have secret information um, tattoo artists are writing books with this information in it I've researched I've read a lot of these books there's professional tattoo artists doing videos. I don't see what's to gain from trying to hide information from people. So I'm putting it out there for you guys to watch. And it's the internet age. You're not going to hide anything pretty soon. It's all out there. If you're tr The people I see who are trying to hide information are usually the artists who are not putting that much of an effort into it. They're not trying to help out. They're the ones who are being a little stingy and their artistic talent isn't that great. So to try to protect themselves, they tried to hide information from other tattoo artists. Now, I believe that the tattoo artists that are going to get ahead are the ones who are going to put the effort into it. They're the ones who are going to look into new ideas. They're going to look into new equipment. They're going to learn how to use their equipment and how to tune their own machines. And they're the ones who are putting the effort in. The guys who are trying to keep people from getting information are the ones who are hiding things, are being lazy because they don't want to put in the effort to get ahead. They'll never become better tattoo artists because they're not concerned about learning they're concerned about just making money and staying at the level they're at that's with what tattoo university we're taking things to a higher level and we are asking questions so that we can learn why you do certain things and then once you learn the why and the how you can change your techniques for the better we're not just going to force feed you information I'm trying to get you to ask yourself questions about certain things and to learn certain things that will help you make better decisions when it comes to tattooing.